So that was the title of my thesis. Um, I am essentially looking at how we react to targeted killings as kind of the root cause, and this has a lot to do with um, drones specifically because they, we all can agree, they're lowering. That's the main kind of fear of drones, lowering the threshold of war, um, more military action with less commitment. Uh, and so we're kind of using these targeted killings as lash outs. Um, and I think that with advancements, they're only going to increase in numbers, not just all the other factors. Um, so by targeting, I, sp I specifically focused on two heads of melting groups, but this can be said generally about targeted killings as well, um, in my opinion, that uh, they leave intact the potential to recreate the situation over and over again and therefore accomplish little. Um, and we have this kind of myopic focus as a society, and that is what allows these groups to continue to flourish even after we've declared our war on the global war on terror. So I looked at two studies. Um, this is the reaction at the White House after bin Laden was killed. Um, and this wasn't by a drone, but I feel a similar reaction would be in place. Uh, this is down the street. Um, I was actually, I lived on that street when that happened, so it's very uh, overwhelming kind of celebration, which disturbed me, but that's not the, uh, the point I'm after. And then also, um, a year after that, um, we were introduced to Coney 2012, which I hope most of you are familiar with. It had, after six days, over 100 million views. This reached um, an enormous amount of people. It's arguably the largest internet movement ever. Um, and it just focused on Joseph Coney, um, it's interesting that we focused on Coney 2012 and named him specifically when there are much larger aspects at play, but basically the objective is to find Coney, not necessarily kill him, but uh, it's kind of what um, is the background to all of these movies and when people are asking for justice for Coney, they're asking to kill Coney or capture Coney, but mostly get, get him is the, the objective. So um, the kind of theoretical background behind this is um, of three different things. Uh, first, I'll focus on scapegoating. Um, the kind of broad definition is using outside conflict to distract people from domestic strife. Um, we have the diversionary theory of war, which is an old theory, but still um, used for targeted killing. Basically, something's going wrong at home, um, September 11th. Oh, Let's, let's fight in Iraq, and everyone comes together. So we're basically trying to secure cohesion um, with external war. And this, with drones, this impulse can be exacerbated tenfold because we don't actually have to relocate. We can just, something bad happens, we need cohesion. Let's, let's bring in some numbers of terrorists we've killed. Um, and uh, we also may deliberately search for enemies for unity or unwittingly do so, which is what most of the public does. Um, we also have the right around the flag effect, which is you know what I showed you with the celebrations. We have um, Obama's the the support for the war in Afghanistan went up over ten points. Obama's popularity went up over ten points directly following this killing. So it's it's obvious that it's very very beneficial politically. Um, realistically, poor population on the ground for us not so much. But um, so we do this as a society to save face. We do it um, so that we're not at fault for anything that happens to us. Not saying that we deserved 9-11 by any means, but uh, it's part of our reaction to not want to look at both sides. Um, and we also want to establish a mode of, of control. So we, you know, we don't feel that we're in control. We place it on bin Laden in that instance, um, even though he may have not had much to do with it. And we also are a society of retribution. Um, and so this, in this, the purpose of punishment is not to alter future behavior, but to punish the past. So we re revalidate our norms. We say this is not OK. This is caused by moral outrage, which is anger, disgust, contempt. Um, we, we have these, these feelings that we need to somehow react to. And so even if there is no realistic benefit from retribution, we get this cathartic experience. We feel that we've, um, we've accomplished something. The focus is always on the perpetrator, not the victim. 
No one can name a victim of Coney in this room, probably. I mean, some people who are studying in depth, maybe, but we all know Coney. We all know Bin Laden, but specific victims, unless you've had personal interaction, we don't know. So it's this, this myopic focus on um, the person. And then there's targeted killings, which obviously we've been talking about a lot today. Um, it doesn't exactly fit, as Tom was saying, into any real legal model we have. Um, even if we say that it's legal and it fits our parameters for war, such as global war, the countries we're attacking don't see it that way. Um, and the civilians don't see it that way. So as, even if we somehow stretch it to, to appear legal to us, it will not appear legal to the people that we are affecting. And then there's the effectiveness of targeted killing, which is my main argument. There's been a study that says if you get, if you get the head of a militant group in the, within the first year of the group's creation, there's no chance it will ever succeed. But there's, they're not acknowledging that the, the problem is not the specific group, it's the brand of terrorism, it's a brand of militant groups that um, are rampant. So my first case study was on Bin Laden. Um, so I interviewed college students and veterans of the Navy. Uh, these are just some quotes from them, and also the last one is about from a newspaper. But um, so within these quotes, you can see kind of the misconceptions we have about how effective targeted killing is. So Bin Laden is hands down the most successful terrorist ever, fortunately, is what a Navy veteran said. And this is not acknowledging the hierarchy um, within the organization, which we, you know, we kind of impose our own view on it, which is Bin Laden's at the top, you take him out, everything crumbles. It's more of a, a brand, um, of Osama kind of functioned as a financier, he connected people, he wielded weapons of mass communication, but that does not mean that take him out, Al-Qaeda falters, which obviously did not happen. As we can see, they're still very active in you know, Maghreb, Mali, Iraq, they're not, um, they're a brain, so you can't, you have to fight it in a different way. But um, also there was a misunderstanding of motives and um, how this will affect, so we, we have a gap between provocation and um, prevention, because people believed it, when I interviewed them, they said, oh, well, we showed them, you can't mess with America, we got him, but then, Two sentences later, they're saying, oh, well, but they might retaliate and they don't mind martyrdom. So they're saying it acts as a deterrent while at the same time saying, well, it'll only make it worse and they don't mind. Um, so it's very, uh, we have this big gap that we need to address. And then also it comes from these retributive feelings we have, escape, the way we scapegoat. Um, so once we got this coward, you know, achieved retribution, we've achieved justice, but what has actually happened positively? And I mean, not, not saying there are no positive effects of targeted killing, but they're very temperamental, um, and in my opinion, just make things worse and don't address the root causes, which I mean, in the Middle East and North Africa region, you have high poverty, you have low education very often, the adult literacy rate is 25%. So you're not addressing why these why these people are so willing to take this life where risk is so high because they have very little to lose often um, in this scheme. So then we go to Coney. Oops. Um, this is just one quote that I felt captured a lot of the feeling towards towards the movement. Um, so. She is saying that you can do all your research, but there's no way you wouldn't support the Coney 2012 movement. We have to get Coney. How could you not want to? There's no reason Coney would ever do what he's doing. And I'm not saying that he's uh, done a lot of atrocious things in Uganda and the surrounding region, but no one's willing to look at a campaign of Museveni, which is the president of Uganda. Um, if there had been and you could easily spin a Museveni 2012 if you wanted to as well. I, he's done really, he's participated in child abductions, looting, raping, murdering. So I basically it creates this binary between the government of Uganda, which we're supporting now in order to get Kony. They 
sent out 5,000 African Union troops. We have 100 American advisors all to get coding within the region. But when they put people in camps to protect them from the LRA, more people died in a week than died in a year from the LRA at, that, at their highest um, level of functioning. Um, it was 1,000 dying a week in 2005 in the IDP camps. They were supposed to be protected by the government, but the government troops were you know, looting, raping, they were engaging in child prostitution, and um, there's a lot, of, a lot we didn't look at there. So we want to address these symptoms of violence. We see these, these violent images, and we find simple solutions. We address, but we don't address the, the core disease. Um, it's a, Cone 2012 was a manhunt, in my opinion. So, and doesn't really do anything for the people of uh, Uganda, Africa. But, so this is just um, an image from the Cone 2012 movement, which had been a lot in it, um, which I thought was really encapsulating of my ideas. Uh, and it just says the worst. And this is perfect because we have the worst and we have the best, and we're not willing to address what is in between. So. If, Kony is the worst, he's against the Ugandan government, then the Ugandan government is the best. If Bin Laden's the worst, and you know, he was against Western forces in Mecca, then they are the best. Uh, and it's it's just not that simple. So drones um, will increase the uh, range of targeted killings, um, which will not only have further implications as you all discussed. Um, but at its root concept is not only ineffective, but very dangerous in my opinion. Um, they already have increased, drone strikes have already increased negative perceptions of the US, public outrages that we have regarding 9-11 is spreading in uh, regions such as you know, Pakistan, Palestine, uh, where, where drones are take, drone strikes take place. And our moral outrage, if you can compare it to theirs, what did we do? We're, we're normalizing terrorist activity in my opinion by engaging in similar, in, in the views of the public that we are attacking, we're engaging in similar things that terrorists would because we're killing civilians, um, we're damaging property for you know, the potential to kill a terrorist that may not really have an effect overall. So um, we need to concentrate, I compared it to the Hydra in Greek mythology, where Hercules cuts off one head, two more grow. And, uh, that's not what the monster is, though. It's just the head of the monster. And as we continue to just take out, when we when we take out one terrorist and kill people from four different families, there's a lot of anger there, and they won't necessarily come through with that. But it supports the the terrorist activity, the the hate of of the U.S. Um, of Western forces that has allowed these brands, these militant groups, to rise. Um, and not only that, we don't focus on what we actually need to do to address these problems. So um, as long as we allow inequity to flourish and try and just have military solutions, target um, you know, people that we perceive as the worst, then we will not create a sustainable solution, no matter what the technology is.